So, do you feel better now on the real mode? Yeah, I feel. I, feel, I think if I use it one more time, like, I'm, I'm comfortable with it now. If I use it one more time, I'll be good. Okay. Teaching them how to be a good redneck. And then I just concentrate on your ladder and your footing. Right there is good. I just throw it about a third. There you go. Whew. I'm exhausted. <laughs> we have been going all day pretty much. We're cutting grass, we're doing aerations, we're putting out fertilizers. And it was 27 degrees this morning. So on this video, I'm gonna explain how I can do an aeration and why you shouldn't do it. Hey guys, don't forget we cover a lot of this in the lawn guides. The lawn guides are up, they're free, use them. Freelawncareguide.com, I just have to say this at the beginning of every video. At the top of that website, there's a link to the Bermuda Lawn Guide and the Zoysia Lawn Guide. Go use them, download the calendars. There's product links, every discussions about any problem you might have. Next, I always say, and I've always said in the past, the time when you do a core aeration is when your grass is actively growing because you want to be doing it during a time where it can heal itself. You don't want to come out during a dormant period and do a core aeration. However, this is perennial ryegrass and it's looking absolutely gorgeous. And even though it was 27 degrees this morning, we're coming out here, we're cutting this with a real mower today, we're putting down fertilizer and I'm using my special billy goat and my billy goat aerator, if you don't understand a billy goat, uh, I can change out the spikes. So I can use a core and pull cores, or I can put a big spike or a small spike. Today I'm going to use the small spikes on it. You can't even tell that it's been aerated. It's been aerated, you can go right behind the aerator and reel mow it. It doesn't pull up dirt. It doesn't relieve compaction, but it does allow water, oxygen, and nutrients to get in. Now, I bought my aerator, gosh, what, four years ago? And I know I've used it probably 50 times. So if you go 50 times, $100 or rental at least, uh, that's $5,000. And I think I paid $2,900 for it. There are a lot more now, but uh, they're really hard to find. So when you do an aeration, typically you're going to do a core aeration, but you're going to do it during peak growing season or it's not peak growing season when your lawn is actually growing. The other tip I'll give you, if you do an aeration coming up, you want to do it when your grass is short. So the shorter the grass, the easier it is to aerate because I like to pick up my cores. A lot of people say leave the cores because it adds nutrient. No, they just mess up, especially if you're real mowing. If you're pulling cores out that are two inches deep, they're going to be full of rocks. And so when you run a real mower over that, you're going to damage your blades. So if you do a core aeration, pick them up. I use a leaf sweeper. I've shown that before in my videos, but I got to say, um, this just looks, it just looks like a golf course out here. So uh, anyways, I'll just run you through the day. I got a bunch of weird stuff. John came over. Uh, we got a full day ahead of us and uh, you'll see how we got to this point, which is great looking. All right, so the first thing I need to do, I think I'm gonna aerate this first, but the first thing I gotta do is pick up dog poo. There's <laughs> nothing like slipping on dog poo out here. Let me do that and I'll get the aerator fired up and go there. So if you're wondering, this is not self-powered. This is actually powered by the impact of the tines that are actually sort of facing backwards a little bit. So as you go along with one of these, if you have a tine operated one, like when you're going downhill, obviously it's wanting to go faster. 
So when I go downhill, I actually put a little bit of resistance on it. I actually just hold back a little bit when it goes downhill. But when it's going, if it have to go uphill at all, then I might put a little extra push behind it. I want to keep it at the same travel rate the whole time. Now let me show you something. So I just did this strip here. I mean, you can maybe see like that hole and that hole, but the holes are pretty much completely hidden. That's undone and done. See the difference? I mean, and there's going to be thousands and thousands of these little openings for water and nutrients and everything to get into. Again, an active growing grass. Um, I would not do a core aeration out here this time. Core aeration's too early. The roots are going to have to try and heal, and it's a slow growing process. You got that? So that's why you want to do a core aeration when your grass is actively growing. That's when you want to do it. It's also good to do it when the grass is really short. So, anyways, continue on, I will. So last week we cut this, it was so tall we had to cut it on a level four. This week we're gonna cut it on a level three with the Ego. People keep asking why we leave that door open, why don't we use a side discharge, isn't that dangerous? We have never had a stick or rock or anything fly out of the back. And even if so, we're walking off to the side. It's an electric push. And the side discharge gets clogged. Even with the door fully open, four or five times during this cutting process, when this grass is long and wet, we have to tip it over and clean it with our hands. I'm just telling you. That's just the way really long rye grass or really long fescue or however that is. So this is that test stripe. You can go ahead. This is that test stripe we've got with the DGL fertilizer. And we cut last week and it's twice as long as the other grass. <laughs> you can see it. And hell, you can see the stripe here. So there's, there's the non-treated and right in here is the treated. see because of the blade rotation the grass throws off to the left so you walk off to the right of the mower when you do this and everything even if a stick were to go through there it's going to throw off have you ever been hit by hit by anything mowing this mowing that other crap you would <laughs> <laughs> no but there's nothing here really A uh, question always comes up about pre-emergent if I do a core aeration. The, 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 the basic synopsis of that is when you're punching cores, you're maybe opening up, what, 5% of your whole surface area. So there's just not enough penetration barrier to worry about weeds. So don't worry about it. Put down your pre-emergent, and then later when your grass starts to grow, do a cut it down short, do a nice core aeration, open it up. Core aeration is more beneficial than a spike aeration. A spike spreads the dirt, and a core aeration pulls a plug so your dirt can uncompact. Got it? But, like on golf greens, in most golf greens, they do a spike aeration because you can just roll it and continue on play. So I've got, today I am using the 2024 McLean series. This is the LC Low Cut series. I link to this on the website, uh, on the page below. This will cut from 1 16th of an inch, I believe it is, 1 16th of an inch up to 1 and 3 quarters. So for the average Bermuda owner that wants to keep their grass fairly short, this is a good mower. Bermuda, zoysia, anything that you want to keep short. Uh, if you have a taller grass or you don't want to keep your grass that short, then go with the regular GR series. Got it? Before I start this, let's go, let's go see how John's doing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I do have a lot of extra clippings, that's for sure. That looks really good. I will say this about this unit. I don't think I've ever had a unit run at such a low RPM and be a comfortable rock rate. I mean, it's just just like just above idle it's really quiet and when you run a McLean because 
everything is controlled by that lever. It literally is a two finger or a three finger mow. That's it. You can just do it with one hand, two or three fingers. And just let the mower do all the work. It's actually pretty nice. mode it can get confusing so here's the way I'm teaching them when you get to the end of your row when you get to the end of your row just let go of everything when you get close just let go of everything then it's a one two and three He was also worried about he, he was missing he, he was missing a little stripe in between these rows and that's because he wasn't overlapping enough it's hard to see out here today because it's cloudy so uh, I told him to overlap more you can overlap as much as you want when you reel mode man this this is nice this is short it's nice but you can see now I've spike aerated this I've spike aerated it and cut it look at it Great. So, do you feel better now on the real mower? Yeah, I feel a lot better. I think if I use it one more time, like I'm, I'm comfortable with it now. If I use it one more time, I think I'll be good. With okay. It. And that's it. I was just showing them the manual feature. If you leave the wheel up and then squeeze the handle, it doesn't move, but the blades are growing. So, like if I have to go around here, go around those rocks, or maybe go around a tight curve or hit a corner in that fence, what's going to happen is. If you're going with the wheel, you're going to feel panicked because the mower is still going and you want to stop. So if you know you're going to come up to an area like a corner, mm -hmm. just stop, lift up that wheel, squeeze the handle, get the blades going, and then you can just push it into a corner, push it just like a, reg just like a regular real mower, just like a regular mower, gas mower. You can just use it like a push mower. So like if you want to go around those bricks, because if, if you run these bricks full speed out here, you're gonna hit one of them and it's gonna knock it off. So, but this looks great. So what are we putting down now? Um, I've done a bunch of stuff out here, but this is actually gorgeous. I mean, this looks like a golf course right now. It does. So I'm switching over to PGF Complete, which is your based fertilizer for almost all lawns, all season long, PGF Complete. You can do stuff with green chalker and DGL and whatever you want, but that is your base fertilizer. So I'm gonna put some out here today. So one of the things, I love green chalker and I hate green chalker. The only thing I hate about it is that it's solid black and you can't see it. Now you saw the fertilizer coming out, the PGF complete. You can see white and green particles. You can't see anything come out here. You won't see anything. So this is a matter of understanding how far this throws, picking your line and sticking with your line. That's why right after you cut is a good time to do it or in the morning when there's dew on the grass, you'll see your real tracks. So, I was telling John, we know the green shocker is going to throw about 36 inches or so, and then 36 on this side. But when you come back, it's also going to throw another three feet on this side. So you're going to want at least a six, seven, eight foot space in between here. So what I'm trying to teach them to do is pick a line 
and go to your line, slam your handle down, down is off, right? Down is off, turn, and then take one, two steps and turn, and we'll see if the two steps is enough to leave that six foot space, okay? That's why I like these small bags because I don't have to open a big bag and worry about storing it. One of my favorite fertilizers, it's a love-hate relationship because it's one of the top performing fast exacting, but because it's like black salt, you can't see it going out. We call this almost a granular liquid because as soon as you, if you put this on in the dew, you can actually go to the dew drops on the grass and see these particles turning into liquid. True. That's how fast it is. So as soon as you, that's why I like to put it down on dew covered grass then run my irrigation right after that, it goes right into the ground. It's almost like a liquid. Look ahead of you, look ahead of you, follow that line. <laughs> He's looking down at the line like he does with a real mower. Okay, so you're on this line. Uh -huh. So you want a probably about eight feet, so go down another line. Uh, no, I want you to go one more down. Right there. And you see how the, the difference is, don't look down at the line, just sort of look ahead at the line and just walk the line. All right. Go ahead. You cannot see that stuff come out. <laughs> All right, so you're on this line, so go about three feet, three feet, stop. There you go. Now what are you doing, Doc? <laughs> so let me explain. A couple of weeks ago, I was putting up a shelf and it fell and I hyperextended my arm. And so that tendon that's at the end of your bicep got sort of strained. And now because it's been so long, I think I have a hairline fracture on one of those bones in there. So I'm trying not to lift anything with my left arm. I'm trying to be real gentle. So John's gonna load up the corn that I would normally load up and we're gonna go back and we gotta fill feeders for the deer because we feed them all year here teaching them how to be a good redneck. Pull that off. Throw it on your shoulder. And then now just concentrate on your ladder and your footing. Right there is good. Now just throw it about a third. There you go. How many will put it in two of them? Uh, let me feel it. Uh, Actually, that's good for this one. I'm going to throw a bag out here because they're used to feeding up here quite a bit. So I'm just going to, I'm going to open up a bag. What I usually like to do is I'll keep one bag open and I'll scatter like a third of a bag at each feeder. And then plus the feeders will be going off too. So we're tired. <laughs> we're tired of cutting grass and fertilizing. Now we're going to go be rednecks and put out some corn feed. How many game cameras I got out here? You probably don't even know. <laughs> I, don't, I honestly don't know how many I have. I think I got one, two, three, four. Four plus six is what? Ten. Ten. And then I've got two more motion tracking cameras. Well, that was a nice surprise. That's two in a row. <laughs> I didn't even bring my camera down here. I didn't think I was going to catch anything, but this little corner down here. Seems pretty hot down here. All right, so I'm gonna do something which I will probably regret, and that is I'm going to run my irrigation system for the first time since, what, the fall. Uh, one of the problems with starting up my irrigation, probably unlike yours, is that I'm on a well, and when you have a well, over time, when you just let it sit, you can actually suck up a lot of debris and sand and dirt, so. I may end up having to go around to all these damn heads and pull them up and clean them out, but... I don't know if I had... Oh, okay. There's a... Well, I got water. Let's see. Let's see what we got going on. I'm actually... I'm actually kind of impressed. <laughs> oh, crap. I got one of these heads that's covered up. So just remember that when you put down fertilizer, you want to put fertilizer down on dry ground. That's one of my number one rules. And then uh, feel free to water it. 
it's not going to start to work. Your fertilizer is not going to do anything until whatever it is starts to dissolve and until those nutrients actually really reach the root system. So you got to put water on it. So that's why I'm watering it. We haven't had rain in several days. We had that huge rain event. We had that huge rain event, you know, uh, a week ago, but now it's starting to dry out again. But I got to get some water on this. The interesting will be to run that pond because I haven't run that pond in a long time. So the first run of an irrigation system is always interesting. We'll let this run for a while and then I'll go run the pond. So anyways, guys, Hope this video has helped you out a little bit. If there's any confusion, drop a comment down below and smash that like button. Talk to you later. Duh.